did you eat that outfit up or did that outfit eat you up? Today, Taylor Swift, we are going to find out. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Zach. I am the Swiftologist. I make thoughtful weekly videos about pop culture. And I thought that it would be fun to do something that I did last year and do a review of Taylor Swift's street style, how it's evolved, how it's changed, how I felt it has progressed this year. And we've had a lot of kind of seismic outfit, sartorial changes and developments in Taylor Swift's life this year. You know, she's gone through two breakups. She's been bejeweled multiple times, and that has instilled a new sense of style within her. A complaint, or not really a complaint, but a, a note that I've always had about Taylor as a big fan is that I feel like she has no sense of style. She doesn't really have a stylistic identity. She just kind of like wears stuff from time to time. She will flirt with new trends, but there hasn't really been like a consistent designer that she's worked with are like maybe Stella McCartney and Oscar de la Renta for red carpet stuff. There hasn't been kind of the like visual branding and identity of Taylor Swift through fashion in a way that is pleasing to me. But this year, I think we're getting closer to it. So we're going to go through all of these significant looks that have happened this year. And then I'm going to give some notes at the end, what designers I would like to see her wear next year, where I think this might go. The designers that she wore a lot of this year are kind of the usual suspects, but with a few new additions as well. We have the Row, Mary-Kate and Ashley's brand. We have Reformation. We have Stella McCartney. We have Ralph Lauren. Taylor has always had a little bit of a buttoned up part of her style. And I think that that's very true to her, like suiting office wear, deconstructing that office wear, having different suiting pieces. These are elements she really has always liked to incorporate into her style. And she certainly leaned into that this year. So I really like to see that. I would say overall, the theme of this year in her going out looks, and presumably like we know celebrities work with stylists, but these are kind of more true to the things that she would pick for herself and wear on a daily basis, rather than like a red carpet looks video. That would be something totally different. The thing that I would say is the theme or the kind of through line through all of the looks here is quiet, cozy luxury. Taylor isn't really one to wear like a lot of big branded items. And I like that about her. I think it kind of, you know, makes her seem more relatable, which is something she's always trying to do, especially given her new billionaire status. But I've always thought that Taylor looked most beautiful and uh, elegant when she was in her model off duty style. So like basics, good tailoring, clean lines, um, simple color palettes. I really have enjoyed a lot of the looks this year, but my I, overarching thing would be I actually want her to take more risks. That's what I would love to see from her next year. Before we get into this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I promise that you'll find something that you love around these parts. I don't always talk about Taylor. Sometimes I talk about other stuff too. Over 50% of you that watch my videos are not subscribed. And to that, I say, stop making me cry. Please subscribe and check out my podcast, Evolution of a Snake. We talk about Taylor's style a lot. Some might say we kind of clown on it sometimes. And for more exclusive content for that, you can go to patreon.com slash Swiftologist. As per usual, I've put together a little presentation. If you were on my Twitch stream today, we did this together. So welcome back. I do stream on Twitch from time to time. So go check that out because, you know, once it's gone, it's gone most of the time, unless you go to Patreon, then it's sometimes still there. But I digress. We are looking at the evolution of Taylor Swift street style. And of course, we start in the month of April, April Fools. And I felt like a fool in April because what was the first glimpse of her new, her new style, the new eras tour? I mean, this is also a huge career year for her, monumental, right? Like a lot more eyes on her, even more than usual, a return to being kind of the it girl in the spotlight. There was a lot kind of, there was a lot to be expressed and said through her items of clothing. This is the first look that we got from her. And I have to say, I mean, we cheered. This was the night that we found out or very shortly after we found out that it was in fact Jover and the heirloom turkey was on the chopping block. He was done. He was finished. And by the way, Taylor was going out tonight and go out tonight. She did. I mean, I love Taylor in a simple look. We have a very subtle, but still sexy kind of swooping V-neck. And I love the accessories. We have the butterfly, the glitter butterfly. I love to see it. A diamond's got to shine. We've been new. And the sparkly bag. I mean, look at her. Does this look like someone who's crying and sobbing over her breakup? No, he's broke. She's up. Then we get this. And there's an aspect of Taylor's style that I'm not quite sure what to make of from this year. And it's like that liberal arts student, but also short ditch dweller, someone who's drinking matcha lattes and listening to the 1975, which we know she was doing at this time. There's that element to the style as well. There's a contrast between what we'll see later, which is like the more like formal elements, the suit wear elements with the more kind of like college campusy vibes is what I want to say. So these like oversized slouchy fit denim, the platform loafers. She's also experimenting a lot with necklaces this year. So we have a little choker moment. I like it. I don't mind it. The top is okay. Nothing really to write home about, but I think this was definitely like a seed that was explored further throughout the year. Then we get into May. Um, hi, something else that 
that I do when I break up with my boyfriend is go out with my girlies, go out with my girlfriends and gab and gossip about you and say mean things about how terrible you are and serve a revenge look. This is Taylor's revenge dress. I mean, it fits her so nicely. It's cinched in really well at the waist. I love the spaghetti straps too. I think it's so dainty and elegant. Something that I'm not a hundred percent keen on are the shoe choices of the year. When she's not wearing a boot, she's usually wearing like a chunky flop. And this to me is kind of a chunky flop. It is a loafer. It It's just a bit severe with the look. I feel like a very strappy stiletto would have looked very good, especially with the little straps on her dress. I love the chain detail on the side of the dress too. And it's kind of like asymmetrical. The cut of it is really nice. We love the sunglasses. And you know, the girlies are there to support you when you're about to make a huge mistake. Here it is. Sad, huge mistake. I mean, what can we say about this? This is maybe the worst look of the year. Those shoes, girl, did you do that thing where you tied your shoes to the back of your car and drove the car around and the shoes got beaten the crap out of on the road and they got all dirty and you put them on? Is that is that what happened here? The NYU sweater, you didn't go there. We need to give that up now. Come on, girl. You got the whatever honorary doctorate, but you didn't actually go there. And this color is not good. It looks like purposely distressed or like vintage or something. The skirt is not giving. That bag is not giving. You know what it is giving? It's giving granny. It's giving granny. And that bag, unfortunately, makes an appearance many times throughout this year. She's also got the ultimate negative accessory on her arm, a rat. She's got a rat on her arm. So we don't stand. This look, I remember seeing and being like, it's almost right. It reminds me of a look that we had in the reputation era when she was leaving her apartment and going to one of the MetLife shows. This is not, I like the idea of the cut and I like that it's a boxy fit with a taper crop. That's kind of interesting to me. The skirt, is it a skirt? Are they jorts? I can't really tell, but they're not doing it. And I hate a tan sandal. I really hate a tan sandal. I don't know what it is. It's nothing against those specific tan sandals. I just don't like them. And I think that she looks unfinished here. Like there's something missing. I don't know. There is definitely something missing. See the tan neutrals, the tan again, I just don't like it. I don't like the tan shoes. And when we match it to the bag, I'm like, it's just a little too matchy matchy. However, I do love white on her. She doesn't wear white enough. And this simple set with her little midriff peeking through swishy skirt. I mean, I'm easy to please in that regard. I really am. Now we're in June. Uh Oh, fugly shoe alert, fugly shoe alert. Call the fugly shoe police. Cause we have a fugly shoe on the loose on the streets of Manhattan. We need to lock her up, lock her up, stop the count, get those shoes back on the rack. Not good. Not good. I mean, I'm not opposed to her wearing a Birkenstock. I'm known to enjoy Birkenstock myself. It's something about the obnoxious gold detailing on it. Like it feels, that feels very incongruous to the quiet luxury of it all. I feel like if they were even silver, I would like it more, but it's something about the gold that's giving tacky and that stupid bag that bag. I do not want that bag anywhere near me anymore. I do love these oversized sunglasses on her though. They're kind of a serve. I mean, she is serving. I like the skirt. I like the top. I like the belt. Everything else is giving quiet, relaxed luxury, except for those shoes, which are screaming, take me to jail. Okay. This is the first appearance of a baseball cap. She was really into a baseball cap this year and I don't love it. I don't love a baseball cap on her. This wouldn't be the worst offender of that. I think that the oversizedness of both the shirt and the skirt, the skater skirt, she loves a skater skirt. That's something else we've learned this year. The oversizedness of that is kind of not really up my alley. I feel like wearing even like spandex shorts with this would have been kind of a look, which is what she kind of tried to do, I suppose, with the Shania Twain tee fit that she does later on that we'll talk about. But I think that there's too much oversize going on. Like when you're wearing an oversized piece as that's kind of as slouchy as that shirt is, you got to have some sort of like narrowing element on the bottom half just to make it more visually appealing. And, you know, we could have gotten like navy blue spandex shorts to match the hat. That would have looked really cute. I'm not against the chunky loafer Doc Martin vibe here. And I like the little sock too. I think it could have been really cute if we had done those tight spandex shorts. But this skirt is a no for me. This is another skirt that I'm not really crazy about. She likes this asymmetric skirt vibe. There are like several iterations of it throughout this year. I'm uh, not really much to remark upon, except I hate the color of the shoes and I hate the color of the bag. She really likes that baby poop, baby diarrhea color. And I don't. I don't like it. I don't remember this. When I came across this look, I was like, I don't remember that. And I know why I must have blacked out when I saw the shoes. 
look at those shoes. <laughs> look at those shoes. They're so ugly. They're very ugly. Yes, they are. If we had just done even those shoes that she tied to the back of her car and beat up driving down the streets, those would have looked better with this. I don't understand the strap on the back of those shoes. I love the row and I, I would guess that these are the row shoes. I might be wrong about that. I love the row. I think they do excellent, quiet luxury things, but their footwear would not be my favorite unless it's a boot. If it's not a boot and it's from the row and it's to be worn on your feet, Taylor Swift needs to put it back on the rack. So I'm saying I like the top though. I really like the, the like corset, like bustier kind of vibe of it all. And it's, it's sweet. It's a little girly. And I like the jewelry and the accessories too. Fun. August slipped away like a moment in time. And I wish that this look would slip away from my memory because I hate it. I hate this. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I remember seeing that this is not a dress. It's a skirt and a top. And I'm just kind of like, when Taylor decides to like match colors, she really goes all out. Like these, this color blocking here is not doing it for me. It's something about the contrast between the like slightly darker orange and the almost reddishness of that satin silky skirt with the top. I mean, the half sleeve is really killing me. If it was even like a tank cut, it would have looked a little bit nicer. The jewelry is, uh, do we need the, the thick gold choker and the long necklace. I don't think so. We have an ugly shoe as per usual. We have an ugly clunky shoe and we have the bangs on display and a small braid braided into the side of her hair. She was trying something. I appreciate it when she tries something, but sometimes we shouldn't try it. Now I couldn't get like great pictures of this, but this is what she wore to Jack Antonoff's wedding. Great 1989 Easter egging. I really enjoy this color on her. The specific shade of blue is very pretty on her, especially when she's a spray tan. I love it when she gets a spray tan. I just think she looks so much better with one, especially when she's wearing like bright light colors. And I love the shoe. We're not wearing an ugly shoe today. She was like, no, I can't be fugly shoe at Jack Antonoff's wedding. That's not fair. I have to do that on my own personal time, not at Jack's wedding. And you know, it's slayed. I liked it. I really like this a lot. September. And this is a big one because she was leading up to 1989 and a certain meathead enters the picture. I love this look. This to me is the most successful model off duty slash college campus vibe. I think the cap works really well with the outfit. The braids are cute. I don't know why we're doing braids all the time, but you know what? For this scenario, I thought it looked really good. I love the kind of taupe bag with the navy and black. Navy and black together is such a vibe. And I feel like for so long, the fashion advice was like never wear navy with black, but I think that this combination looks really nice. I like the contrast of the like almost linen-y material with the just plain black tank. This is simple and it's fun and she has a clunky shoe, but it works. And I like that she's embracing the oversized pant trend that we've really been seeing going on in 2023, lots of wide-legged pants. I think in general, when Taylor wears ones that are tailored nicely, they look really good on her. So I like this look a lot. Also, it has that like utilitarian cargo short thing made more interesting by the fact that it's like a linen fabric. Like it looks like there are a lot of pockets on it and it moves nicely when she walks. So I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Why was she just casually serving? Because I'm obsessed with this look too. I don't know what it is. It's really giving high in a sport. It's giving me throwback to the red era vibes. This is kind of the personal style she was rocking with back then. This isn't a classic pair of Wayfarers, but it looks kind of like it. I love the sporty vibe of the top. It looks like it's almost like a terry cloth material, which is so fun for the summertime. A little fun thing for the summer party. High-waisted shorts, I think, or are they low rise and we just can't see? I don't know, but I like the shorts. I like the bag, the sneakers. It's cute. This is giving, I'm a pop star, but I'm also just like you. I'm a girly. I'm going to go to class. I also really like the pop of orange with the bag and the fact that the red on the shirt kind of clashes with it. It gives, gives me something that I like. Oh yes. Oh yes, ma'am. Another great look. Now you see the skater skirt works here because we've got a tight top off the shoulder, tight black top boot. Look at that boot. Look at that boot. She looks amazing. These boots always make her legs look incredible. There's one example of where it doesn't from this year, but this looks really good. My only note here would be blowout, queen, spare blowout. Time for a, just a run over the hair with, 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 a, with a straightener. Could we just get a little, a little dry brush? Can we get the Dyson in here and just do a little teeny tiny blowout? Could we? It looks like she just got out of the shower, to be honest. But I mean, look at the spray tan. Look at the legs. Look at the skirt. I love the pleats in the skirt. It's very girlish, but then the boots are giving official. The boots are giving, I'm going to step on you. And 
I like that contrast. Here's another look, 1989 TV inspired, that color, it looks very good on her. I think this was the night she forced everyone else to dress up in blue too, which is such a Taylor Swift thing to do. And I really like the shoes. I wanted to point out the shoes here. Um, I want her to stray away from wearing black shoes. A lot of the times I think her outfits are ruined by a black shoe. And I think I understand that impulse sometimes when you're wearing like different colors together, you're like, mm, what could tie all of this and make it cohesive, make it a union. And you're like a black shoe. But I think that that can be the boring choice. Like a black stiletto or a black heel would have been really boring here. And this block heel is very cute. I have to say maybe Sabrina Carpenter inspired. She always wears a shoe like that. Okay, look of the year. Now this was to an after party, so I don't know if it counts. It was definitely done by a stylist, as is all of her stuff, but that bag is back. I don't know if it's the same one or if it's just a different sparkly bag, but I love. I live. And the makeup is amazing. The jewelry is incredible. I think the jewelry looks really good because she's not wearing anything on her arms. Like she's not wearing like a long sleeve or a jacket. And it's like a low, a low neck. Obviously, it's not a high neck top. So we got the cleavage on display. Looks very good. I love her in denim. Denim is something she has been loving this year. So I, I say keep it coming because blue looks great on Taylor. And I love the shoe. I love the sparkly shoe. I'm like a magpie. If it sparkles, I'm interested. Love, love. I love the business bitch. When we go into business bitch mode, I'm activated. I'm interested. So I think we just have like a plain black. It looks like a t-shirt dress almost with a hound's tooth or I actually can't tell my computer screen is like blurring a little bit and I don't have my contacts in either like a hound's tooth or a very very small plaid gray kind of brownish coat I really love this look it's very simple it's very elegant it's very I need to go and negotiate my AMC deal and make a billion dollars off my movie and the boot come on she loves a Louboutin and I think that there is some, there is something so sexy about the red bottoms on a boot specifically I think they can look a little tacky on a heel if I'm being honest but with the boots there's something very mm, I don't know delicious about it. Oh God, I hated this. I hated this. What was she thinking? What was she thinking? Great boot. Great boot. I'll give that to her. That jacket is is just a crime. It's that jacket could have five Taylor Swifts in it. That jacket could have Travis Kelsey and the entire Chiefs team inside of it. It's too big. It's oversized in a regard that does not look good. It doesn't look intentional. It just looks like it doesn't fit and that it belonged to someone much larger than her. I don't like the color choices she's gone with here. I love her in that orange generally. There's a 2016 candidate of her in this kind of color that I love. But again, when you are wearing such an unstructured overcoat like that, what you're wearing underneath, I feel like has to be a little bit more tailored or snug to your body. And when she took it off, you could see that it was also like kind of like a drapey material. And I just think that altogether it's a mess. It's a mess. I love the boot. Whatever kind of etched leather that is looks very bad with denim. And also, is that like a wool dress? It's not good. And the green bag, no. No, 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 bad. I mean, she was doing a night of counseling for her ex-boyfriend's ex-wife. So maybe she was like, this is the one day I don't have to slay. It's not about me. But I know she was texting Travis that night. So we should have been, I don't know, dressing the part. Gag, one of my favorite looks of the year. I think people get so confused when I get so excited by just the most basic, simple things. But I just think that Taylor is such an elegant, natural, and classic beauty that playing to her strengths, which is like a very model-esque frame and an almost kind of like uppity sensibility. I don't mean that in like a negative way. I mean it in a sense of like, she's regal, almost political, presidential. She has that air about her. And I love the suits and separates. I love the wide-legged pant. I love this color. I love it with the black. The belt is perfect. The shoe, the bag. When she put the blazer on and it's cropped and it's just single-breasted, I mean, I'm obsessed. I love the notch lapel. It's very, very good. <laughs> and then we have the shot heard around the world. Her at the Chiefs game. I mean, what to comment on this other than she was cosplaying as college girl who's going to boyfriend's first football game and, you know, feigning interest in football. I love it. I love to see it. She rocked the house down boots. This is cute. I liked this. It reminded me of a look that she wore when she was with Joe in 2022, walking down the street in New York City. I like the oversized slouchy sweater. I really do love her in a cozy big sweater. And I love navy on her. We need to do more navy up in this bitch. And the skirt is cute. I like that plaid. Is this the skirt that when you like lift up the top a little bit, you see that it's a denim skirt at the top and she covered it? If so, thank God, because that was ugly. This looks very good. Tartan is also a good move for her. And I like that the orange on the bag kind of complements the orange on the skirt. Now the shoe. It's like a Saint Laurent inspired, maybe it is Saint Laurent, motorcycle boot. And I just, the straps are too much for me. We could have just done a plain, even a Doc Martin, I think would have looked really good with this. But no, we had to go with the buckles. <gasps> Another very straightforward look that I'm totally obsessed with. I mean, this is a good shoe. 
a good shoe. It has a chunky element to it, but it has an interesting proportion. Taylor has such long legs that she can experiment with, with all different kinds of shoes. We don't need to be doing chunky clunky all the time. And I mean, the dress is very simple. I like that she's cinching at the waist. She's kind of understanding that we need to create some dimension in the body these days. And the blazer on top just brings it from like girly going out to dinner to girly going out to dinner and just making sure that my plan to uh, completely destroy Scooter Braun off the face of the earth is well and truly in motion. October, my birthday month, and also 1989 release month. Okay, this Chiefs look gagged me. She looks evil in a really great way. Like she looks villanelle. I think it's the eye makeup. She has like a very kind of severe smoky cat eye combo that is, you know, hitting her in all the right places. It's making her face look very chiseled. She does have those like hunter eyes. So when you do an accentuation like that, it tends to look very severe. It's giving Yzma, but make it fashion. And I love that about her. The hair looks really good. Why is the hair not like this every day? This is the question. I mean, she was going to see her man. She was going to see her man play. She's like, I have to turn a look. I love her in a leather jacket too. We really didn't get a lot of leather jackets this year and I'm into it. Matched with a boot, of course, of course, of course. And a cute little like rhinestone short moment. I think that there was some other detail to the back of these shorts that had like a little heart or something in them, but she looked very cute. She looked very cute. And I think that this is a very effortless, chic, scary look. And I appreciate that. People should be scared of her. Um, I hated this. I hated this. It's giving, hi, fellow kids. I'm just like you. I, have you guys ever heard of Roblox? You guys ever played Minecraft? I do that sometimes. Bleep bloop. This is not, I mean, I appreciate a graphic tea moment, but this feels like Princess Diana cosplay. Like it's too direct of a reference. I can't explain what I don't like about it. I don't love her in a cap anyway. I don't think that's the best graphic tee she could have used. And those shoes, those sneakers are ugly. So this is a no. But we go straight from a no to a hell yes, because look at the business bitch. She's back. Is that the same coat as before? I don't know. It's similar, but I love the, the I love underneath the kind of like triangle cutouts that are in the top. I don't know if it's like a bustier or what. I think there is a photo of her that shows that in more detail, but I couldn't find it. Again, very simple, very eleganza. I like the simple only one necklace and she's got a very pretty boy on her arm. I like the bag too. The bag is very cute. The, she's been doing some good bags this year, I have to say. I really go back and forth on this look and I think a lot of people do too. I love her in leather. I love this leather skirt. I love that it's kind of like a patina leather. It looks a little bit aged. It looks a little bit like almost on the gray side, which I really like. And she's wearing a sheer kind of like mesh top with a design on it. Re it's really giving heavy by Marc Jacobs, which is a designer that I want her to wear more of. I don't think it is Marc Jacobs, but I really, I, I like the concept of this. And I like when she leans into specific Gen Z elements of her style. I like that kind of like relaxed, abstract print mesh thing with the leather. Like that's all working very well for me. Could we have done a different shoe? I don't get the lace up boot has to go. No more lace up boots. I'm it's finished. We're done with that now. I love this too. I want to call her style like a new preppy. There's like a, or like an urban preppy. There's something very like streetwear, but also kind of like collegiate about it all, like an Ivy League aspect to it. I love the use of the cap here. And I love it even more because we got a photo of her without it later. Unfortunately, she added a fugly coat. I hate that color. Again, the baby's diarrhea color. Those shoes are gorgina. These might be the best boots of the year. I mean, the the arch and the heel, I can't imagine they're comfortable, but damn, do they look good. We have like a t-shirt dress. It's almost like a rugby shirt dress. And I really, really like it. It looks really good. Okay, work, work. This was on my birthday, 27th of October, 99 release day. We love a leather blazer. We do. I like her in, in any kind of leather, but brown leather is an interesting thing. Interesting combination of fabrics going on here. I don't hate it. I don't love the skirt. The skirt is kind of a bit ill-fitting. I think that it just kind of sits very squarely, doesn't do anything for her. The stacking of the necklaces... I don't know how to feel about that with this outfit specifically. I love the boot. Does the red leather boot go with everything else that's being worn? Well, no, but it's not the worst. I did not like this. I did not like this. The Gucci monogram. We don't do monograms, Taylor Swift. No, we don't do that. Please don't. We don't want to see that anymore. Her hair looks really good. The jeans are a little too wide fitting. It's starting to look like a maxi skirt. And that's when you know you've gone too far in the direction of oversized jean. And the shoe looks fine, but when you pull it up, it's like a brogue heel boot monstrosity. And we don't like that. Her highlight looks good though. Highlight popping all the way through this year. And finally, not to end on a low note, but what is this? <laughs> what is this? This I think could have been saved by not wearing a long sleeve shirt and not wearing a necklace. 
and wearing her hair down. We could have done a tank. My issue really, though, is the skater skirt with the high, high boot combo. It's like there's not enough skin showing between the boot and the skirt. And the skirt is pleated. It just looks a little messy, I suppose. There's something that I just think is proportionally off about this. It's like you are thinking she's completely covered and then you see that just teeny tiny sliver of skin and it throws you off. So I don't like. But overall, I thought it was a very good year. I mean, we haven't had access to her personal stylings like this in a very long time. Some things have changed. Other things haven't changed. I think she's generally wearing less fugly items. Like she's less trendy. The trend she really seems to be leaning into is that kind of like Gen Z, Y2K, TikTok fashion thing. That seems to be something she's interested in flirting with. And I like that on her when she pairs it with her like urban prep, new collegiate Ivy League thing. There's definitely a Taylor Swift style to carve out in between those two things that only she can rock. And I came up with a few designers that I think she could wear next year to really help pull this off. Ghani. I really like Ghani. I feel like in general, their suiting and their tailoring is very fun. It's kind of classical, but it has more of a like modern element to it. Their cuts are really interesting and the fit is always really excellent. I could see Taylor in that blue fit on the right tomorrow. I think she would look fantastic in it. I don't know if she would be brave enough to wear that, but I think one of the black ensembles would for sure be something she could rock nicely, but she would need to accessorize it the way that it's pictured. She can't just be wearing the ugly shoes. She can't be doing a baseball cap. No, 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 no. Blow out good makeup nice handbag no taupe nothing neutral nothing nude nothing taupe black metallic even even a color pop a color but not that tan please in a similar vein saint laurent has been doing some really interesting suiting almost like safari inspired that i think is really pretty and i think that she could take pieces and elements of this specifically with like the cinch waists i think she could accessorize and make this fun like think of the look on the right with like a pair of biker shorts or even with a little like a uh, like a pencil skirt that would be really cute and a, and a cap make it gen z i think that she could take these like kind of like more formal more dressy things and add her little gen z tweaks to them and look really elegant and chic I also love the glove leading into the suit on the right hand side. That looks good to me. And then to make it a little blue in her hair fun for the Teen Vogue party, I think that she should pick up some of the Heaven by Marc Jacobs stuff because the Gen Z thing, the sheer top, like she's very into that and she's into the bling and the bedazzled. And I think that if you take little elements from these things, like I don't think an entire Heaven by Marc Jacobs look would be, would look age appropriate on Taylor. It would just make her look silly. But like one of those fun bags or a fun belt or a fun like mini skirt or a mini top that could be really interesting when you pair it with some of that like when you pair it with some of that like office core gorgeous boot when you add it with when you style it with something that's a little bit more grown up I think that we're really getting somewhere somewhere unique that only Taylor Swift can go and then finally I've suggested Tommy Hilfiger because I think that these like oversized pants these big slouchy sweaters the tartans the plaids the uh, relaxed suiting I think these are all things that she's been wearing anyway she wears a lot of Ralph Lauren but I think that Tommy Hilfiger has recently kind of pivoted into being like a more fun version of Ralph Lauren like a new preppy vibe. So I think that if Taylor incorporated some Tommy Hilfiger pieces with some Heaven by Mark Jacob fits, we're really getting somewhere. We're really getting somewhere. So that is the end of my Taylor Swift's 2023 street style review. In general, I'm pretty happy. When do you ever hear me say that I'm happy? I'm thrilled. I'm chuffed. What do you think was her best street style look of the year? Do you hate anything that I said? Do you want to argue with me in the comments? Feel free to do so down below. And also let me know what you want to see Taylor wear in 2024. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye, Swifties.